Hey developers, so today we're gonna look at five common mistakes that new developers make. I'm gonna talk about each one of them and just explain why you shouldn't be making these and give you my recommendations on how to overcome them. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in Action book, which you can find the link in the description below. And also I put some of my favorite courses. So if you are a new developer, yeah, check out the, the link in the description below. I have some of my favorite courses. You can get a lot of them just for $10, which are great deals. So yeah, check those out. So this is gonna be a quick list. I actually did one like this a little while ago, um, but I went ahead and changed it up, um, changed the what you guys should learn. And I, I think this will really help out. Okay, so let's take a look here. So first mistake, jQuery. So you're probably thinking, why jQuery is great. Everybody uses jQuery. Actually, yes, I'm not trying to shame you if you use jQuery, but it's a good, it's a mistake I see a lot with new developers because I think you can really have a lack of understanding of JavaScript if you use jQuery. Um, what I mean by that is that you should really focus on the fundamentals of JavaScript learn the document model, learn how to use the queries. You can use the query selectors to make, to do pretty much a lot of things that you used to have to have jQuery. You used to have you use jQuery, but now you can just do natively inside JavaScript. So learn those first. So really you probably don't need it, especially if you're using any sort of modern stack or modern framework or UI library, like if you're using React or, or Vue or Angular, you really don't want to pull for jQuery to do some of those things. You really want to stick with the what is coming with the framework itself and then not worry about using jQuery. Also, it's uh, some people I hear think that jQuery is like the easier version of JavaScript. Uh, it certainly isn't. It's just uh, another tool in your tool belt and really you don't need it all the time. Probably don't need it any of the time. You will have times you will you will need it if you are coming into a legacy code base where it's been around for a while. It probably still has jQuery in it, and that's fine. It's, you can learn and adapt to it, but I would make sure you understand those fundamentals of, of JavaScript, and you could probably rewrite some of that jQuery and remove it out. It does have some uh, um, performance. You know, it, it is another bundle that you have to download, although it's not huge. I would definitely try to uh, stay away from it. So yeah, don't look for it. Don't look to it first. Make sure you understand the basics of JavaScript first. Learning bootstrap first. So this is kind of goes in the same line as, as jQuery. So if you don't know, there's a CSS framework it used to be called Twitter bootstrap, but now it's just known as bootstrap. And it's just kind of the CSS library that has some components, has some UI elements that you can use in it. But really I'm going to go back just like with learning jQuery, uh, you would probably want to learn CSS first. And I think employers are really going to be wanting to know that you could take any sort of design that they throw at you, be it from a PSD and um, a Figma file, sketch, whatever they send over, and that you're going to be able to create it almost pixel perfect. I would say some are pixel perfect and that you can do that without having to use these, these UI kind of crutches and frameworks. The only exception I would say to this, and this is a little controversial, I really like the material design frameworks. Like Google has one. A lot of companies are creating their own design frameworks. In that instance, I would probably say that it's fine that you're using those because those are just like little components that you can throw in. Um, they do have some, you can do some grid and stuff like that in it. I would say though, for the most part, learn how to do everything with CSS first. And then later on, when you kind of graduate a little bit more in your CSS skills, maybe you can throw a material frameworks library in there so that way you can get cool select dropdowns and those already have built in accessibility and all that. But for the most part, I think you want to stick with CSS first. And there is some performance implications by using these kind of UI frameworks and libraries. And Really, employers want to see what you can make. And uh, I think the fundamentals to kind of overcome this is learn Flexbox and learn Grid. CSS Flexbox is super powerful. I mean, it has great browser compatibility. Grid is not quite as good as browser compatibility if you go back all the way to IE11. But for the most part, these are the two that you want to learn and that you should use. 
The other is semantic HTML. So it's really common if you look at new developers, they just have tons of divs and spans everywhere. So really you don't want to create your whole document, your whole website just using divs and spans. There's really neat things that HTML5 gives us that can really kind of uh, create a very well organized HTML web page and document. And so there's things like sections and headers and 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 footers and things like that where you can kind of put all these building blocks of HTML elements together and it just makes more sense when you look at it. Plus screen readers, accessibility. Um, they'll actually, when you're thinking about accessibility and how other people with maybe disabilities look at your website, they're gonna be using special third-party software that's gonna be scanning your site. And if you have well semantic uh, HTML up, it's gonna be easier for them. Plus, I just think it looks better and it makes more sense rather than have a million of these wrapper divs and divs over divs. I mean, I've definitely been guilty of that creating sites in the past. And I'm just trying to get better myself. So lack of testing. I think this is something that um, it depends on the organization. Not all organizations think you should test, but I think you should at least know the fundamentals that way you can jump into an organization and show them, hey, look, I can test. And if you're interviewing for a company, having being then like, yes, I do tests. I make unit tests. Here are examples of tests that I've created. So of course there's unit tests, which are testing small pieces of functionality. Um, there's the end-to-end -end tests, like Cypress is really a popular end-to-end -end -to -end test runner. Doing, um, learning what continuous integration is, like how's the pipeline? How can you do kind of, how can you have your tests being run every time you're, you deploy your website? And then you gotta watch out for, if you are into testing, creating bad tests, either tests that don't really test anything or tests that are too, um, they're too coupled with the actual implementation details. Usually you want your tests to be abstracted out a little bit. That way, if you change out a method or change out a few things, it doesn't completely break your tests because brittle tests are the bane of a lot of people's existences. Anytime anything minorly changes, the developers have to go back and fix them and they don't really serve much purpose other than annoying the people. And then of course, you'll wanna also make sure that you not just test the happy path, but also the uh, uh, the edge cases and things like that. So uh, this is one thing that's not taught a whole lot. I don't think how to write good tests, it's not something that we learn even if you go through a coding bootcamp, but it's a great skill to have and it'll kind of push you above the rest. Uh, so one thing I see is that if you might be starting off, you can build a web page Maybe you're using Bootstrap or jQuery, but you don't understand how to do uh, responsive design. So how to like how to make your website look good in all different size, to, uh, to different sizes. How to do like mobile first development, things like that, where you're kind of thinking first and foremost on how to work um, on a mobile device first, and then you kind of put your media queries to effect if you have a larger page size. So that's all I wanted to go through today. Those were five quick things. I love to hear what you guys think of some things that people should avoid for new developers. Um, if you find this video helpful, click that like button, uh, cl click that share button. Also, if you do uh, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell button. That really helps me out. That way uh, it, you'll be notified the next time I do a video. But I think this is just real, five really simple concepts and, uh, you know, one other I could have put in here is that some kind of people have an over-reliance on JavaScript frameworks or, or UI libraries. So they may be using Lodash everywhere, or they may always, um, they may first learn how to use React without really understanding like the underlying parts of it. And I think that's another kind of beginner trap too, because if you don't really understand the, the building blocks of the framework or UI library you're using, you are going to have some problems when you get in the real world and they give you a situation that doesn't fit exactly into what the framework offers. You might have to break out of it. You might have to write some gnarly JavaScript to do what you need to do. And if you don't understand JavaScript, especially in the React world, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. All right, so I appreciate you guys listening all the way to the end. Uh, like I said, make sure you click that like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks, bye.